ladies and gentlemen cavalry commanders in rise of kingdoms have never really been in a worse position it feels like i've been playing the game since right when it launched and i feel like cavalry commanders in the open field have been dominant for a vast majority of rise of kingdoms history but it hasn't been up until this past year that cavalry commanders such as william have really felt like they are starting to fall off so i'm starting to get the itch i'm starting to get the feeling that possibly maybe new cavalry commanders are around the corner and let me just be very clear even as a partnered creator with rise of kingdoms i don't have any inside information as to the next upcoming commanders in the game but i have been fighting in kbk for the last couple of days on and off this zone is honestly it's it's pretty much a stalemate at this point but one thing that i've noticed for certain is that one of my cavalry marches typically performs poorly compared to the rest of the marches that i'm using and it's usually the one that has my william in it and let me just be clear it's not like abysmally bad compared to the rest of the armies but it's it is noticeably a little bit lackluster okay so i'm starting to get that itch i feel like we need something we need something fun something new something exciting and so today on the actual launch day of ragnar prime he literally just landed in the game a few moments before i started recording this we got him on day one okay but despite that despite Ragnar Prime coming into the game today we're going to be talking about cavalry and in particular I'm going to be giving you guys my sort of predictions for the next cavalry commanders that I expect to be coming very very soon possibly within the next five weeks would be like the soonest that we could see new cavalry commanders and if that's the case and if history repeats itself then that means we might start to get some new information about these new commanders within the next like two weeks which I hope happens because I've expressed this in the past but like I I have all these commanders and yet I feel like nothing my lineups haven't fundamentally changed in in a, in a while and so I want something new I want something exciting I want something powerful and I feel like it's time for cavalry to get just a little bit of something that performs well in the open field so that's what we're going to be talking about today but first what's going on guys cheers really quick before we jump in if you guys appreciate these sort of forecasting guides for rise of kingdoms that kind of gives you an idea as to what i'm thinking about as far as the future of the game so you can start to plan your investments accordingly then please drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and consider subscribing we are so close to 80,000 subscribers and if you are already subscribed thank you if you're not just double check see if you are you might be surprised you might think you're sub because you see all my videos but you actually aren't sub anyway as we do for these types of videos we have to break out the spreadsheet that I compiled showing the release date for all the different commanders here in rise of kingdoms this spreadsheet took me quite a while to make honestly and so what you can see here is sort of the generation of commander then you could see the commander their three talent trees the sort of role that I would think that they play in the game how you get them the release date and then days since previous commander and then we have their active skill you know style damage factor number of targets okay it's a very simple table these are the things that I think are important to keep track of and I think these are the things that help us understand what's coming next for rise of kingdoms so as you guys can see here we have like the gold key commanders for example and then we have a couple of commanders that were added after such as Mehmed Mulan Ragnar the most Pyrus these are all the additional gold key commanders that were added over the years and then we move on to the second generation commanders and things of that nature but if we scroll on down here you'll see that recently we got Choi Young and Shajar only 35 days ago because today we just got Ragnar Prime so this is a, an absolute um anomaly this is not something we've ever seen before we've never seen a brand new commander come into the game that is out of cycle and also meta that just seems to be the case for Ragnar Prime we've never seen this before we've seen instances of you know new commanders come into the game in a very short amount of time for example we got a Manatori and Gilgamesh merely 42 days after Pakal and Chuk, which is honestly insane I don't know what was going on there um I actually could be wrong about this if anyone knows the exact launch date of uh, a Manatori and Gilgamesh you can let me know in the comment section below but besides that the only time that we typically get brand new commanders outside of a release window is when it is a goal gold key commander and Ragnar Prime is not a gold key commander and he's not part of the regular you know mightiest governor wheel sort of cycle 
and so this kind of throws a wrench in things but one thing is for sure and that is that i think the next release will be cavalry okay because if we ignore ragnar prime as a bit of an anomaly as a bit of you know them sort of releasing him as part of a promotional thing for this new kvk you know we've never seen this before so it's hard to to, to add that into our math equation here but if we look in the past um we'll see that there's typically between four and five uh, different commander releases between leadership cycles right so we have Suluan and Honda and then we have one two three four five releases before we got another leadership commander and then between Hera Bobber and Margaret we had four commander releases before we got Lapu Lapu Gajamata and Gonzalo and so for that reason I don't think we're going to get the next set of commanders being leadership engineering uh I it just doesn't I mean we could very well like it could very well be I'm not trying to say that we won't um I would say it's honestly it's probably 50 50 but I feel like the game needs cavalry more and also we recently just saw the new king skill come into the game that is a slight debuff to the ranged commanders um, a lot of the ranged players were very upset about this truthfully I haven't seen that king skill used very much in my own kvk so I don't really think it's that big of a deal to be honest with you guys but um, I've always kind of thought of your ranged March as your seventh March so if you invested in ranged as a primary like fighting army I I, I don't know what to tell you uh I I never really recommended that I always felt like even when we got Cordoba and he was proven to be very good I still thought it was more of a you know end game late late end game type of, of build um, not that it's bad but that's just kind of how I see it and I don't know I think them sort of adding a shadow pseudo nerf to ranged with the new king skill um it makes me feel like they think that ranged are in a strong spot right now right I mean if it's if ranged is is so good that it needs a sort of shadow nerf or a pseudo nerf in the form of a king skill then to me you know if there's a 50 50 chance that we get either ranged or cavalry for the next cycle then to me it seems like cavalry are probably in a in a spot that needs it the most and the reason for that is because all of gen 9 um you know not including Ragnar Prime because I don't know if he's gen 9 or not what I, what what gen actually is he um he might be the first ever 10th generation commander I don't know um but all of gen 9 was basically an optional and investment honestly like you didn't need any of these commanders for the open field and honestly you didn't need the ranged commanders here either unless you were building a seventh March and you really wanted to go that route um so it's been a long time since we've seen sort of a must-have commander I feel like Herman Prime was the last time that we saw a must-have commander if you already had for example Alexander the Great then you didn't need William Wallace if you already had you know William and uh Joan of Arc plus you already had Huo and Nevsky then you didn't really need Belisarius and Shajar I mean if you already had for example Ashurbanipal YSG uh that you didn't really need Shajar either right and so you know because it's been so long since we've had a must-have commander and because engineering and ranged you know as strong as it as it might be uh doesn't seem like it's in the place that we need a new one I think cavalry is coming next that's just that's what I think um I think we're gonna round out the year with cavalry and with that being said when can we expect these new cavalry commanders let's just get that over with right now I think the soonest we can expect them is uh December 17th why is that well that's going to be 70 days from the most recent mightiest governor and wheel commander releases with Choi and Shajar I'm obviously ignoring the release of Ragnar Prime because he is clearly an event commander he's not part of the mightiest governor wheel of fortune cycle um however because we did just get Ragnar Prime so soon I feel like players would be a little bit off put by getting the new cavalry commanders so recently after Ragnar right so with that being said it is also possible that we could be seeing an 84 day release window which would put these commanders on the literal last day of the year um which would be December 31st I think it is very likely and honestly it's probably more likely 
that we see a December 31st release date for the next set of commanders, whether it's cavalry or not, that's probably what I think the next release date is going to be for the new commanders. And again, the soonest would be the 17th. But the reason that I feel like they might not do that is because of Ragnar prime coming into the game. It's just, it's just so soon after Ragnar, it's literally like 30, uh, you know, 35, again, another 35 day window. Right? So yeah, I don't think players would like that very much. So I think they'll push it back just a little bit, just another two weeks. And I think we'll see the next set of commanders come on December 31st, the last day of 2024. I expect we better be getting some bangers Lilith. Okay. I want to see something insane for the end of the year. You know, we've had so many lackluster commanders come out this year, in my opinion. Okay. In my opinion. And let's just be clear. If you're a rally or garrison lead, we've had some insane stuff come out, right? Like the, the we've had some like game changing commanders come out this year for rally garrison. That is obviously the case. But if you're an open field player, I think a lot of things that we've seen this year, a little bit lukewarm. So I want to see, and I guess Ragnar prime is the exception, right? I think maybe that's why they put Ragnar prime in here because they're like oh well we need some we need someone to invest in something right maybe that's why they did that i don't know but anyway i want to see us end the year on a bang and i think cavalry getting an absolute dominant open field commander here would be very exciting now what else are we going to get here right because if we look at the sort of trend of commanders in the game then every cycle like let's take a look here for Choi and Shajar we have a garrison and versatility commander and if we look at CPO and William Wallace we have a conquering and versatility commander and if we look at Eleanor and Belisarius we have a garrison and versatility commander and you know the trend goes on and so what you'll notice is that every release cycle for a mightiest governor and wheel you get at least one versatility commander right and so that is almost always I mean I it's been since like the last time they broke that trend was with like Zhang Yu I think is the only time that we got a wheel commander that wasn't a versatility commander like you have to go all the way back to 2021 to see them break that cycle so what I'm trying to say here is that the wheel of fortune commander in my opinion I think it's pretty obvious this is going to be a versatility commander it's going to be for field and that is that with that being said what do we think that the mightiest governor event commander is going to be well personally I think that it's pretty open and shut case if we look for the history of of cavalry last time we got garrison and field right before that we got conquering and field and before that we got garrison and field and before that we got conquering and field and before that we got okay well this is the exception garrison and conquering right but up until this we saw a pretty easy to identify trend we had rally garrison rally garrison rally ladies and gentlemen yes i think we're going to be getting a rally commander here for for cavalry i might have already said that in this video i don't remember if i did or not a little foreshadowing early but that is what i'm expecting i'm expecting us to get a set of cavalry commanders at the end of this year one rally one open field okay so with that being said what types of blue talent tree could we expect here and this is where things start to get a little bit more speculative right because I think the release date the acquisition method the type of of commander and rally garrison or rally versus field I think that's all pretty much like easy to predict right the blue talent trees are really where we start to see a wrench thrown into things because it's not as easy to predict here this is never been more true than when I tried to predict CPO with William Wallace I was completely wrong right I thought that maybe we would see an attack tree rally and so I was a little bit close there right I was a little close but we ended up seeing a brand new talent tree right we saw smite talent and uh, I don't think we're going to get that for cavalry but it's possible right it's like literally possible um are we going to get smite for cavalry probably not I don't think we'll get smite for cavalry I think that if we did that would make Attila and Takeda very strong again which honestly would be great I like the idea of old commanders having a resurgence that gives you a reason to go back and invest in them if you haven't right I think that's great and also if you're an older player then you get to bring them off the bench again and use them again and honestly Attila and, Take Attila and Takeda were so dominant back in the day like they literally ran the game I don't think there's ever been a more devastating rally than Attila Takeda at launch they literally I think they had to like nerf Attila and Takeda a little bit and also buff Martel and Constantine just to like make the game balance I don't remember maybe they only buffed well I, yeah I don't remember which one they buffed but anyway that rally was such a dominant rally that we still use it today for city, city rallies right like that's that's just the meta for hitting other player cities there's other combinations you can use but typically that's what players do and so if we saw smite cavalry I think it would 
you know it might influence the game in a way that the devs you know would find a little bit too chaotic and so because of that and because typically we only have seen infantry and range to get smite i think that cavalry will not get smite will they get a whole new talent tree like smite probably not if they did it would probably lean into the delta formation with uh combo attacks but i don't really think that there's evidence there other than just players kind of speculating and hoping that that could be the case a lot of people looked at the delta talent or the delta armaments and formation and they were like well what is this for who is this for and so people are kind of future projecting and thinking maybe it's for cavalry that's possible but assuming that they don't do anything crazy there i have a couple of predictions and they're actually a little bit boring predictions the first thing that i will predict here is the rally commander and i think the rally commander is either going to be an attack tree commander or a skill tree commander the reason for this is because if we go back and look at some of the more recent rally commanders we got most recently justinian right he's the newest technically newest cavalry rally commander he is a support commander and i i don't think we're going to get another support back to back before that we got bertrand who was a defense commander and that didn't really go over that well i feel like bertrand wasn't a very popular rally choice just in general before that we had zhang yu who was on the wheel and he was a skill commander so we've never seen an attack commander since attila from a rally perspective right so it's been a long time i think it is it is overdue but it's also possible that we just see another skill commander so i think attack is most probable skill is second most probable and finally i think there is a chance we could see a defense tree commander here i think it is is much less likely if i were to just put an arbitrary probability on this i would say like the attack tree is maybe like a 45 percent chance of occurring the the skill tree would be like maybe a 35 percent chance of occurring and then a defense tree would be like a 20 percent chance that they do that or maybe it's like a, a 10 percent chance and then another 10 percent chance that they create a whole new skill tree right that's possible or a whole new talent tree i should say but this is my prediction for the rally commander and for the open field commander i'm going to predict the same thing but in reverse i think that if we get an attack tree cavalry rally we're gonna get a skill tree cavalry open field commander and vice versa i don't think that we'll get two attack commanders i don't think we'll get two skill commanders we don't typically see that besides like cpo and william wallace I think the reason they did that is because we just didn't have smite commanders right and so they like could put both them in the game at the same time and make it interesting but typically we don't see the same talent tree on a single release the last time they did that was like nebu and cyrus which was like a very long time ago that was the end of 2020 so it's not impossible they have done it before but it's it's very rare that they do that so i don't think we're gonna see two skill commanders i don't think we're gonna see two attack commanders i think that we will see either an attack or a skill commander for both here and i think that the open field commander is more likely to be a skill commander because if we look at the trend here for the open field commander we have mobility then we have skill then we have support and then we have skill and then we kind of break the trend with skill again here for uh zhang yu but again he's not really an open field commander he was just the wheel commander that year and then we have attack and we have mobility but for the last few years it seems like they've gone for skill not skill skill not skill and then here i think maybe we will get skill again that is my best guess you know again this is all just my assumptions i have no idea i think that cavalry could really benefit from a skill-based commander right now i think that again william is being used a lot right now and he's a very old commander he's a gen 4 commander he came out in like in fall of 2020 right so i think that we need a really strong skill commander here and truthfully you know there's already a lot of great skill commanders and you know i guess it doesn't really matter right it doesn't really matter it could be the case that if it's an attack commander it just takes the place of william and then it, it's he's just doomed to be a secondary which is whatever it's too bad but you know it is what it is but this is this is my guess and again this is not based on anything other than like a little bit of trend observation and just kind of my overall feel and vibe of the current meta that's what i'm thinking again you could put like maybe a little nod to the defense tree here if you wanted to it's possible 
but I think the first two are more likely and these definitely will be different okay with that being said let's move on to the active skill and this is where things get even more speculative because this is all again just based on my sort of vibe for the open field but if we look at and again we'll take a look at the rally commander here is this going to be a single target damage skill is it going to be an aoe skill or is it going to be sort of a normal attack damage or a buffing type of skill I don't think it will be more of that buffing type of skill by that I mean similar to like Attila Takeda right that's like it, it kind of buffs your normal damage that sort of thing it's possible right it's very possible but I think it's probably going to be either single target damage or an AoE skill and in the same boat a single target is damage over time and between all those things I think the most the most likely is a, it's just going to be a plain old single target damage skill and why is that if we look at the history of the mightiest governor commanders here we'll see that the mightiest governor for cavalry last time was Eleanor she was a single target damage commander then we had Justinian also single target damage then we had Jan Ziska also single target damage then we had Bertrand who was like a damage over time type of thing which was a little bit weird then we had Yadviga which was also a single target damage but in that same release we had a garrison and conquering and he was aoe right so typically it seems to be the case that we we get a single target damage commander from the mightiest governor event for cavalry the only exception there was bertrand who was kind of just damage over time but regardless i think we'll we'll probably continue that trend i think when it comes to the rally garrison meta it's a little bit easier to you know control for that sort of thing in terms of like not breaking the meta right so that's kind of my prediction here again this is just purely speculation but we haven't seen an aoe rally commander for cavalry since zhang yu i think that was the only one ever right and that came on the wheel of fortune it was very bizarre so i don't necessarily think they're gonna break that rule here i think it's it's possible but i don't think they'll break it as far as the damage factor here i think we can safely assume that it will be between 2500 and 2800 if it is 2500 it will probably have some sort of really powerful buff or debuff attached to it or maybe it will deal 2500 and then another damage over time like another extra tick of 300 damage on the next turn or something like that or it'll deal you know similar to William Wallace where it will deal you know a little tiny bit of damage to nearby targets maybe but really I think it'll be in this range somewhere here I think we've broken the ceiling of 2700 with you know earlier we saw it we saw 2700 come on huo and then we saw it reached again with our boy cpo the rally cpo and then we saw it broken with shajar right she finally broke that 2700 ceiling so i think 2800 is the new ceiling for these types of commanders i think it is totally possible again if it's on the higher end here and it could be it could be even higher than this but if it's on the high end it'll just be a beat stick skill right the higher the damage here the less likely it will do something fancy the more likely it will just be raw damage right we see that on a lot of different commanders but i mean you know even if we look at like cpu emilianus for example he deals 2700 and he has a really powerful debuff the target takes 20 percent more damage for three seconds right so i mean maybe maybe not maybe for this rally commander for calves we see a 20 or 2800 hit and it also has a really strong debuff or a really powerful buff for yourself so now that i think about it a little bit more i am starting to think that this is this is probably going to be on the higher end right i think we're going to probably see between 26 maybe even 2900 here to really push that that boundary but also we already have like a really we have a heavy hitting Justinian and we have we already have like Nevsky is still a rally right and especially if this is going to be like a skill tree commander I don't know I think this is going to be quite high I think this is going to hit like a truck and you know the higher the damage the less likely there will be a debuff or buff but we'll have to wait and see with all that out of the way let's talk about the open field commander here and this commander I do think will be an AoE commander I think if they do this I think it will be AoE and I think that it will be a three target AoE okay I do not think we'll see a five target here I think historically the only troop types that have done five target damage have been leadership and have been archers primarily it's mostly archers the only exception to that is Liu Che and I think that the reason for for that is because they really wanted to give infantry something really strong because they have admitted in you know sort of a face to face with the developer thing that infantry was in a bad spot they acknowledged that and so they gave them something insane uh Liu Che obviously is insane and so he's very strong so that kind of breaks the rule but besides that every other five target commander in the game is either archer or leadership and so for that reason I don't think they're going to break that trend now I think we'll see an AOB commander here but I think he will be a three target commander and why do I think he's going to be AOE well if we look at all of the most recent open field cavalry commanders 
we have not seen an aoe commander here since joan of arc which was the end of 2022 so it has been over two years since we've gotten a new aoe cavalry commander i know it's actually kind of insane but that's just the truth and so because it's been literally over two years it'll be about two and a quarter by the time this commander comes out i think it's time for cavalry to get a new aoe commander that they've been begging for since basically huo okay but really since belisarius so that's my prediction there as far as the damage factor here i mean we are moving into a new sort of era right this is going to be the 10th generation of commanders you guys which is actually insane we are in double digits of generations of commander and so with that being said the damage factor here i'm guessing will be between 2100 and 2300 i think it'll probably be i mean this is a pretty tight this is a pretty tight measurement i can see it being too 2000 right i think that is pretty common for three target damage hits especially if we look at commanders like herman prime for example was the most recent aoe wheel commander he was 2000 then we saw ragnar prime just came out and he has three target but he's 2200 right and he deals extra damage on top of that right so i think that we have officially broken the 2000 damage factor three target ceiling with 2200 here so i think that for this new cavalry commander if it's aoe i expect it to be over 2000 2000 would be the bare minimum right it, 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 it can't be less than that I, I i mean if it is i don't even know like it'll i mean it'll still probably replace william right let's be real he's 1500 but you know i i really think that we're moving in the direction of you know greater than 2000 damage factor here and again it could deal something extra like Joan of Arc Prime that is sort of a supportive nature or maybe a buff for yourself or a debuff to the targets that are hit or maybe it's just an additional damage tick similar to Ragnar Prime or William Wallace who knows but that is sort of my expectation here again the higher the damage factor the less likely it is to do something special or cool like a buff or a debuff or anything like that so that is kind of my prediction now with my predictions out of the way for the troop type and for the talent tree predictions and the active skill predictions who do I think that these commanders are actually going to be when they land in rise of kingdoms and this is again all speculation I have no idea right I have no insider information here but there are a few key historical figures that are sort of missing from rise of kingdoms and it's a little bit odd right like you would expect them to be in the game and first of all King Arthur right King Arthur is like one of the most famous historical figures that is just oddly missing from rise of kingdoms I've been talking for years about about Vlad the Impaler how he's not in the game he definitely should be Hattori Hanzo would be very cool although that doesn't necessarily paint himself to be a, a cavalry commander maybe possibly but he seems more infantry to me if he were to be but regardless there's Oda Nobunaga right who again seems a little bit more like he would be an infantry commander but maybe he could be cavalry as well there's Hammurabi who's just not in Rise of Kingdoms there is King Baldwin the fourth right the leper king there's even King Tut from Egypt right I mean that's a, a kind of an ancient pharaoh that you know might show up in a game like Rise of Kingdoms but hear me out for a second what if okay what if the next commander release for cavalry has none other than sun tzu prime this would be quite the interesting development okay i think that a lot of players since day one have expected sun tzu prime to come into the game ever since the first prime commander landed people are like oh well if we're gonna make epics legendary let's make sun tzu legendary and i'm all on board for that i think this is by far the most requested legendary commander and i think a lot of people expected him to be infantry if he were to be a new legendary but right now infantry is in a really good place in rise of kingdoms and so if we were going to get sun tzu prime you know maybe they do change the troop type that's typically what they do right besides herman prime right like he he's obviously an archer both for epic and for legendary but i mean you know they they typically do change the talent trees from epic to legendary and so if they were to do that maybe we see sun tzu prime come into the game as a cavalry commander and have him absolutely dominate the battlefield and be that savior that cavalry so desperately think that they need right now and i think that would be really cool right i would be hyped about that all the cav mains would be super lit about that does it make sense historically like him riding a horse i don't really 
really know okay but we've got plenty of uh interesting developments here in rise of kingdoms already right like we have Genghis Khan he's you know got a bow and arrow even though he is a cavalry commander so you know there's like those sorts of little things where it's like ah, you know I mean like yes I know you can fire a bow and arrow from on top of a horse of course right okay but my point is that you know we can kind of bend history slightly and, and maybe we get a Sun Tzu Prime I don't think that's necessarily the case I don't think that's going to happen but I think that like you know can you imagine how excited the community would be if we ended a, a picture of this right December 31st the last day of the year it is New Year's Eve okay and we get boom brand new Cavalry Commanders is an AoE Sun Tzu Prime everyone's lit we're going in 2025 with a whole new field meta with Sun Tzu Prime and with Ragnar Prime that would be really exciting to me that's what I hope happens but we will just have to wait and see guys with that being said if you made it all the way to the end of this video I hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video as I said we are so close to 80,000 subscribers which is actually insane so please consider subscribing down below and drop a comment down below what you think about my predictions do you think that I am on the money here do you think that this all makes a lot of sense logically or do you think that Lilith is going to do something crazy do you think that Cavalry isn't even going to be the next release cycle let me know in the comment section below I would love to hear from you guys and with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace